Okay, mic check, testing. Um, you guys hear me? Hey, Eric. Just me, everyone, welcome. Um, some interesting topic we want to look at tonight. And the study that I'd like to offer, first of all, is a, uh, a review and also part two of the title knowing good or knowledge of good and evil and let's see Just bear with me one second yeah on the website there's a study called knowing good and evil and yeah the in that study I offer that Adam and Eve was a type I believe of yeah of the uh, the church and when they disobeyed God that is also spiritually pointing to the the church choosing evil rather than good and and that's how I I think we can see the uh, the, the harmony there yeah it's the church before the great tribulation now in this study what I'd like to do is focus more on knowing good. I don't think we looked at that last time. Yeah, they became gods. Exactly, Eric. I don't think we talked about the, you know, that aspect of it the last time. So I, I want to try and see if I can relate um, how it is that they come to know good, which is Christ, in a time when they disobeyed God. Like Enosh. <laughs> yeah. Now, the, the word good, I think we... Uh, we all agree that that's pointing to Christ. Let me just share uh, just a couple of verses. Not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, the good there, sinless knowledge of Christ alone. Now we know the Bible says prior to the fall that they, everything was good, right? Everything was good. Eric writes, he began to call with the name of God, the men of the name. Yeah, exactly, Eric. We also read uh, in Genesis 1.31, God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. So good, without a doubt, I think, is Christ is good. Christ is the Word of God. He is the, uh, the very essence of good. And I think we can all agree with that. Mark 10.18, Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Now we know that uh, that doesn't mean that Christ is not God. Uh, the rest of the Bible will not allow that. So we understand that in his human form, perhaps, uh, he is making a distinction between him and God, but he is eternal God. And we read in Psalm 25, verse 8, Good and upright is the Lord. Christ is the Lord, right? Therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Yeah, so I don't think we need to spend too much time on this, uh, determining who the Bible is referring to as good. We know that that is Christ, right? Now, the tree of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which was a test in the Garden of Eden, right? It was a test. Now, that test, because I'm offering that Adam and Eve typify the church, the same test, it appears, was put uh, before the people of God, the congregation, the body of Christ. So the test was set before the church for a choice. Christ himself, yes. Now in Genesis 2 verse 9, let me post that. Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the side, good for food, the tree also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. I'm not really sure um, what the tree itself is representing, except it could be it could be Satan, it could be Babylon, because we read of another tree, right? They were not to eat of that tree. What what tree was that? Um what other tree? Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Eric. The tree of life. Yeah. So the tree of life. Now you can see, at least begin to see, 
that the tree of life typifying Christ and the tree of knowledge of good and evil typifying Babylon. Yeah, amen. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So, and that's the test. Well, how can Babylon be in the garden? Now, you know, today some say that Babylon is the, the outside world. But yet, even going back to the very beginning, we see uh, Babylon, it seems, played an important role in the, the kingdom of God. Because we're looking at this spiritually, right? They were good for food. Yeah, both were created good. Exactly. So now we're looking at the tree of knowledge of good and evil, which uh, appears to be pointing to Babylon. And in other words, the church has to remain faithful. It has to be, it had to eat of the tree of life, which is Christ, not the other way around. Uh, Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And then in verse 5, now notice the language carefully. I try to highlight some areas here. For God doth know that this is Satan now coming to the, uh, to the woman. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God. So right away I think we see that to have the eyes opened is also related to being like God. Now again, we know from the rest of the Bible in the context, it doesn't mean that it's a, uh, a holy knowledge of God. As God said, so now they're looking at uh, Antichrist. They're, they're establishing their own righteousness, their own gods. And I think that's what's in view here. Right, it is the wisdom of Babylon. Their eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods. Not God, but as gods, knowing good and evil. So God, enter, uh, he puts in the, uh, the word good as well as the word evil in the context of the church disobeying God, falling away. So now we have to search the Bible to try and determine how, what this good might be referring to. Now, in Genesis 3 and verse 6, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Make one wise. Again, in the context, it can be talking about the wisdom of Christ. Otherwise, it wouldn't be Babylon, right? So I think we already see here that God is giving us some, uh, some clues to the uh, to the fact that there is a uh, a knowledge a wisdom uh, an understanding a good that is associated with antichrist right and then in verse seven and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons so now they begin to provide for their own covering Eric posted to make one wise is that now the church became antichrist yes exactly exactly and and that's that's the uh, you know that that's the mystery behind it and and i think understanding that concept lord willing will open up a lot of other uh, areas in the bible and of course we need uh, you know god the holy spirit lord willing has to give us the understanding uh, I want to talk later about the virtuous woman. I began to post some verses on Facebook, and it, it's just amazing how, you know, carefully we have to read the Bible. And that, too, I think falls along the same line as what we're talking about here, the, the, the goodly knowledge uh, of Babylon. All right, now, uh, John chapter 9, verse 41. Jesus said unto them, If ye were blind, ye should have no sin. But now ye say, We see, therefore your sin remaineth. And God goes uh, on to giving us other examples in the Bible that when someone, when they say, We see, when they have their own eyesight, their own wisdom, then in essence they are blind. They see. They may believe that they see, but in reality it's not a uh, sight or a knowledge that is that is godly right exactly yeah amen eric 
they're still in Babylon. So they, it's like Adam and Eve. Now they, they understand, you know, their eyes are open, meaning that now they are in Babylon. Now they have their own wisdom. They, they, God has cast them away and, and chased them also out of the garden. We read, um, did I uh, read Matthew 13, 14? Yeah, seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. Uh, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. He said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. See ye indeed, but perceive not. It's a very interesting point, I think, looking at the fact that when someone say uh, they see the church believes it has a truth, especially today, you know, coming in the name of Christ or Antichrist or uh, dominating the Christian world. Now, and, and now they are in Babylon. They claim to see because now they disobeyed God. They've eaten of the uh, forbidden, forbidden fruit, that is, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now they, they say they see, or now their eyes are open, not to God. Their eyes are open to, to evil. And, and the good there is also pointing, I believe, to, uh, to Babylon, to Antichrist. John 12, verse 40. He have blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Okay, uh, Genesis 3, verse 22. Just looking at, trying to look at some language around the, the eyes being open. And and now the uh, the church knows good and evil. Genesis 3:22. And the Lord said, the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. Now I think what might be in view here is that Christ, uh, who is a, a part of the God, a part of the Godhead, uh, God the uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Well, Christ too, he had to endure. He had to go through. Babylon. Remember the verse that speaks about the uh, the Son of Man being three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Yeah, he is one of us to know good and evil. Yeah, but but is it possible that God here? Now, when we look at Christ, the good, we know it is uh, a good that is that is with God, associated with uh, the godliness of the Godhead. Correct. Um, but God is not making a distinction here. Now, the, the unsaved in the body, Babylon, now knowing good and evil, it's not, it can't be a good that is bringing them to salvation, that is bringing them closer to God. It's just the opposite, right? Uh, yeah. So it's just the opposite. But now we understand that, uh, and as a matter of fact, yeah, my battery is running low on my cell phone. Um, as a matter of fact, we, even the believers, the elect, they too, they knew good and evil. When do you suppose the believers had knowledge of good and evil? I think about that. I right, consider what uh, we're just talking about. When do you suppose the elect had knowledge of good and evil? And I'm going to share another section here looking at the good, uh, the knowledge of good prior to the fall. But it seems the elect also. Why? Well, because they came into the Great Tribulation. They were a part of Babylon. Not when they were delivered. When they were delivered, they, they, uh, they're they coming out of Babylon. Now the knowledge is only, only good. That is Christ, not evil. But prior to the... The separation of wheat and tares. Yes, amen. It is in tribulation. Remember, the Son of Man shall be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, typifying the uh, the fact that they were overcome by false prophets, false gospels, and they had no understanding of God's judgment until God began to unseal the Bible. Okay, now Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Let me see. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Now remember that God is putting a choice before the church, just like he did before Adam and Eve. Choose life 
And we see this quite a bit, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. We see this in the Bible. Uh, Isaiah 7, verse 16. For before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Yeah, all the time. The land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. Now, even Christ, you know, the test was put before him. Just like uh, Adam and Eve, uh, he had to choose the tree of life. Or, you know, as opposed to the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's how I think we, uh, we might be able to relate the work that Christ had to do. And now his body, uh, spiritually going through the great tribulation. Uh, and, and even before that, there was a choice made or a, a test set before the, uh, the corporate body. So the believers included, uh, Joshua 24, 15. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve. Remember, Adam and Eve had a choice. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites and whose land ye dwell. Okay. Uh, Isaiah 7 verse 15. Butter and honey shall he eat that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Refuse the evil. We also read uh, Isaiah 65 verse 12. Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. But did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Okay, so is there any doubt here? Hey, Michael, welcome. Uh, we're looking at part two of knowing good and evil. And... and Isaiah chapter 65 verse 12 the, we read that the church typified by the, the people of God in the Old Testament uh, but did evil before mine eyes and did choose that wherein I delighted not. In Isaiah 66 verse 4 we read here but they did evil before mine eyes reading the latter part of the verse and chose that which in which I delighted not. So it's the same principle I think we see throughout the Bible. Adam and Eve had a choice. The church had a choice. Choose the good. Choose the good. Refuse the evil. And that was, uh, I think we see that by the, the two trees that were in the garden. Depart from evil and do good. Psalm 34 verse 14. Seek peace and pursue it. And Eric posted the verses are not coming up. Are you not seeing the verses that I'm posting? Are you seeing them, Michael? Anyone else not seeing the verses? You may have to refresh, uh, leave the room, and then come back, Eric. If uh, if that continues, yeah. All right, now uh, before the fall, I think there is a good here, just like Adam and Eve. Now God, I think here is looking at the church just like he did Adam and Eve prior to the fall everything was good the, the corporate body even though it was made up of wheat and tares but guess what God the Holy Spirit was dwelling in the midst God was there God cared corporately for the church even to the extent of uh, saying that he bought them that they were uh, sanctified redeemed Remember, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance. So God is looking at the corporate body as if uh, it is eternally redeemed. So now there is good. The church is good. God created all things perfectly. Um, and then in James 4 verse 17. Oops. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. So there it is again. I think we're looking at the test that is said before the church prior to the fall. Romans chapter 2 verse 15. Which, which shew the works. Oops. Sorry about that. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts. Their conscience also bearing witness. And their thoughts are meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. Now I know that you know we might look at these verses. Uh, if we isolate them from the rest of the Bible, we, we might be, you know, tempted to think that this is talking about 
uh, all the people of the world. Now, morally, I think it is. But spiritually, where we find the substance, uh, it's interesting the, uh, the picture that develops. Let us choose to us judgment. Job 34, verse 4. Let us know among ourselves what is good. And just a couple of more verses in this uh, area. Romans 1, verse 19 again. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. So in other words, the church had a knowledge of God. Can you see the parallel between that and what was offered to Adam and Eve? Now the church, of course, uh, corporately, they may not have even uh, realized how blessed it was in Christ. The fact that God is uh, providing, is caring for them, just like he cared for the, uh, for the multitude that came out of the land of Egypt. Uh, he, he provided for them in the wilderness. He gave them manna. Uh, he protected them. Same thing, I believe, with the church. Spiritually, God cared for the body. Uh, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. So in other words, the church should know better. 2 Peter 2, verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them. And I mentioned that uh, just now, right? A few minutes ago. Denying the Lord that bought them. Now this happens, it takes place in, in tribulation. We read in Hebrews 6, verse 4 and 5, For it is impossible... For those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. Were these people saved? And were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Were they saved? Is God talking about the, 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 the tares there as well as the wheat? Yeah, I think he is. What about uh, finally here? Yeah, in Ezekiel 28 verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden. Again, I'm trying to see if I, if I can relate the uh, the picture of Adam and Eve now in the Garden of Eden, when they were tempted by Satan. Thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. Now spiritually, that I think is pointing to the. Um, uh, hold on one second. Bear with me. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Am I still on? Testing, mic check. Yeah, Eric posted the uh, Eden, Kingdom of God. Yeah, exactly. So in Ezekiel 28, verse 13, uh, Thou hast been in Eden, of the garden of God, every precious stone was I covering, the sardius, topaz, the diamond, the barrel, right? Uh, and so we understand that the church was present in the garden just like Adam and Eve so there I think we see the uh, the relationship okay now let's look at the fall let's look at the church now coming into the great tribulation choice of evil rather than good just like you know Adam and Eve failed the test uh, the church also failed the test right corporately uh, in Psalm 35 verse 12 they rewarded me evil for good. Now the church begins to embrace false gospels. Uh, they're not relating to Christ at all because Christ is no longer there. He is not in the midst. Uh, allowing uh, false prophets and false Christ to come with signs and wonders, right? Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 4. I will choose their delusions. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. And we saw that verse earlier. And this is in the context now. The church made a choice to go after that which is evil related to Antichrist. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family. Death shall be chosen rather than life. Now, you know what's interesting here, and I'm not going to go into, uh, into this uh, you know, aspect of it. This verse here in Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 3, it could be both judgment as well as salvation. Can anyone tell me why? Because death can also be pointing to salvation 
life could be pointing to judgment, right? Yeah, the death in Christ, that's salvation coming out of Babylon. And also those that are choosing life. Yeah, can you see? Yeah, amen. So that's why I think it's, uh, you know, it's interesting. And, and again, it, it reinforces, I believe, the, uh, the message of the Bible. It is judgment and salvation. Okay, but in this case, I don't think, uh, I think we can look at it both ways. But here, I think in the context, uh, it is more likely pointing to those that are choosing uh, death. That is Babylon, the tree of the, the knowledge of good and evil, as opposed to Christ. Proverbs 8.36 But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. And we hate Christ when we, when the church goes after another uh, another God. Ja, I'm sorry, Job chapter 7 verse 15. So shall thy so that my soul chooseth, chooseth strangling death rather than my my life. So okay, now just offering a few verses here for you to think about and looking at what happened when the church disobeyed God. Just like Adam and Eve, uh, they were given a choice, and then they they chose Babylon. Now, here's an interesting area, I think, uh, interesting in, in, in that we're looking at not the good that is Babylon in judgment, but rather the good that Babylon had in Christ, and now that is taken away from her. Does that make sense? Take a look at Genesis 27, verse 15. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob, her younger son. Anything come to mind when you see that? You see how now there is a switch? God is taken away from the church, from Babylon. Here that is Christ, a goodly raiment. And Esau had this raiment. Esau, you know, who is the firstborn, uh, is typifying, I believe, the corporate church, the corporate body that was arrayed also in the robe of Christ, the goodly raiment, right? Not that he was saved, but rather corporately God was uh, caring, as I offered before, for the, uh, the, the whole body. Now, Matthew 25, verse 29. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. Can you see the, uh, the relationship there? Now God is taking away from Babylon the good that it had prior to the fall. Roman uh, Revelation chapter 18, 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee. Now we can look at this good here as the good that is Antichrist, but I think just in a context, it appears to be, uh, you know, I, I know the first part of it uh, is talking about the, uh, the fruits that thy soul lusted after, and they lusted after Babylon, right? Uh, now that is taken away because now Babylon is setting Babylon against Babylon, or God is setting Babylon against uh, Babylon, and now the goodly, everything that was dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. So it appears, now I'm not too sure about that, it seems like it could go both ways here. It could be the, the fact that Christ is removed from the corporate body, from Babylon, or it may also be the fact that God is now uh, allowing the church to come against the church and then the good, the ungodly good, <laughs> that's interesting, right? The ungodly good, the ungodly wisdom, ungodly knowledge that they had, they no longer possess it. Well, because everything is destroyed, right? Now they're cast into the lake of fire. So none of that is going to be found and Babylon is no longer able to boast before God. Can you see that? Yeah, amen, amen. Okay, so that's uh, that's one aspect of it. Now, take a look at, in this final section, 
the the good that is antichrist that I've been talking about. And Eric shared a you know very beautiful verse, a couple of verses actually, and and I thought uh, is worth repeating here. Uh, let's see. Now let me let's go back and look at Genesis two and seventeen again, just to refresh. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And then uh, in verse 5, Then your eyes shall be open; ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So we wonder, what is this good that the church comes, uh, comes to have in, in the day of the Lord, in judgment? Well, it can't be Christ, because Christ is removed, right? The Holy Spirit is no longer in the midst. So it has to be an ungodly knowledge, ungodly wisdom. We read, uh, this is one of the verses Eric posted on Facebook, Joshua chapter 7, verse 21. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, that's the good. It's it, Again, it's a good that is, that is related to Antichrist. Can you see that? So I think that's a, a, a very good tie-in. And 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted. I coveted. Just like Adam and Eve uh, coveted the uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Uh, when a woman saw that the tree was good for food, right? And a tree to be desired to make one wise. It was pleasant. All of that really, again, is language pointing to Christ. Pleasant. Christ is the one who is pleasant, but in the context of uh, Babylon, in the context of the church, in the day of the Lord, uh, we do see that it's talking about uh, the judgment that God allows to come on Babylon, and now they, they don't have the good that is Christ, but rather Antichrist. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 25, the graven images of their gods. Remember, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So the graven images, <laughs> yeah, they have the Anan with joy. Yes, yes, amen, Eric. Thanks for sharing that. That's a very interesting uh, uh, verse there. Uh, they receive it with joy, not with the joy that is Christ, because if they did, then they would be rooted in, right, in salvation they would not be falling away. So that, again, I think is a very interesting uh, topic. Um, and if you can put together, uh, I think you do have a study on that, and I look forward to uh, to reading the, uh, the verses you have to offer there. Okay, yeah, yeah, whenever you're ready. All right, and let's see. So the graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire thou shalt not desire so can you see the, the the connection there again with the tree of knowledge of good and evil the church was given a choice and they're not to covet they're not to depart from god and you know the scary th part of this is the fact that the church has no conscious understanding or knowledge of it and i'll, I'll explain i'll yeah i'll talk a little we'll talk a little more about that maybe after the study uh, Proverbs 20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. So you see that God here, uh, I think definitely is giving us the picture that there is a goodness that is antichrist related. Their own goodness. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 6. The voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is as grass and all the goodliness thereof. You see that? Again. So there is the good, I think, that's in view and the choice given to Adam and Eve as well as the church. The tree of life versus the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now their eyes are open and they are as gods knowing good and evil. So there is a goodliness uh, associated with the church that is Antichrist. And finally, James chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. And ye have respect to him that weareth the gay. That's the same word as good. It's interesting how they uh, they translated this word here. The gay clothing. Isn't that interesting? And when the Bible goes on to talk about homosexuality, 
in the context of the uh, God's judgment on the church, Babylon coming, uh, you know, against Babylon. Uh, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Yeah, yeah, they think that they're good. All right, so that's all I have. Let me post the, you know, I have a couple of verses here. I'm not going to make this a part of the study yet because I'm still looking at it. But these are some of the reasons why I was offering that the uh, the virtuous woman uh, appears to be uh, pointing to Babylon, praising Babylon in uh, Proverbs 31. If the virtuous woman openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. Remember, they speak peace to their neighbors. Babylon coming peaceably. Uh, again, one other verse, Proverbs 31, verse, oops, that didn't post, hold on. In verse 31, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have some more verses we'll look at uh, in, in a few minutes. In verse 31, give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gate. A very interesting uh, topic that, Lord willing, we uh, will be looking at in the days to come. All right, so the what I'm offering here, let me post the conclusion. And hopefully... I might be able to get it to fit all together. Okay, that should be on the screen. So in the previous study, I offered the conclusion that Adam and Eve seem to be typifying, typifying the church before the fall. Here, we try to focus more on the word good, right? The aspect of knowledge of good and evil after the fall. So this appears to be associated with an ungodly knowledge. Very important, right? So we know that every time we see the word good in the Bible, we, we, you know, we have to be on, on guard. We're not looking at Christ necessarily, right? The context has to determine that. And not just the immediate context, but we have to test it against the entire Bible to try and pick up the, uh, the overall theme. So this appears to be associated with an ungodly knowledge, wisdom of the church, right? Adam and Eve acquired when they disobeyed God, Antichrist now coming looking like God. And that's where I think it's important we understand that. The church comes looking like Christ. Antichrist ruling, it's a time when evil is good and good is evil. And that's why it's very difficult to get a word in edgewise uh, if you try to... Uh, to go to someone and you know tell them that God is judging the church, that uh, God or Babylon or there's church suicide, Babylon is going against Babylon, Antichrist are destroying each other. Uh, very hard to to get others to to see the picture, unless God in His mercy uh, you know might uh, allow us to see that through the Bible. Okay, um, hang on one second. Let me turn off the recorder and then we can open for a uh, discussion.